humongous shout out to the one only Jack Ross for chopping up with ATC about all things his new Campbell Soup partnership, his Mount Rushmore of soulful legend, and so much more. Let's jump right into this 10 minute Q and A. Bunch of uh, D'Angelo, Lauren Hill, my favorite one, definitely the Stevie Wonder ribbon in the sky. Where in the world did the motivation come from uh, all these covers, endless covers? You know, uh, the motivation for these uh, covers really came from being at home as a new artist, uh, trying to find an avenue to continue to reach people. And um, that's honestly how it started. And it just kind of turned into something else. I think the fans and uh, supporters just gravitated it to, uh, toward it and uh, made it successful. So I just never stopped uh, continuing the process and, uh, process of uh, doing the covers. Gotcha. And what's been the best feedback that you've received thus far? I mean, obviously, I, I mean, it's a different experience. Uh, you know, you could have just done this just via audio, but the camera work is there. The lighting is, is perfect, man. There's so much emotion into every record. Um, I, I can't believe how you killed the Aerosmith one, man. Yo, you brought me back to what, what, Armageddon days, man, uh, the, the, the 90s. Yo, definitely just, um, yeah, yeah, speak on that real quick, man. Well, you know, uh, I think one of the, the biggest compliments out of the process I couldn't just do one without the other. It would be two. And um, when I did uh, the Otis Redding cover of uh, Try a Little Tenderness, mm -hmm. it kind of led me to his family. And uh, they reached out. And I think the daughter of Otis said that she had never heard anybody sing this song uh, that close to her father. That was just, like, amazing to me. And the same thing uh, with the Sam Cooke uh, yep. song that I did, Nothing Can Change His Love. His granddaughter uh, and the head of his estate reached out, and uh, we follow one another closely. And she was just like, "Man, this is amazing!" So just to have like the, the bloodline of those actual legends reach out uh, is something just so special when they make those kind of comments. No, nah, for sure, man. And just kind of one more thing related to the whole covers: uh, like, like, is there an algorithm? Is it fan submitted? Is it just kind of what you're in the mood for, man? Because each one of these records, it, it's so heartfelt, man. It's not just a one and done. I mean, you can see and feel the emotion. Um, kind of, how do you pick and choose what's going to be next? You know, it's um, kind of just random. It's kind of random off the top of the head. I know it started out just me in the living room in the beginning of the pandemic just mm -hmm. going through songs that made people feel good and uh from there you know i just continue to try to use that process and look at the times we're living in how can i motivate people how can i get people out of this um stuck mentality that we're in right now and uh, it evolved as we're i believe on the other side you know the other side of the pandemic um you know things evolved and i just want to continue to make people feel good that's not, really the process not for sure man and one thing that you mentioned a few moments ago man being a new artist man i think you know people are going to look at look at you and, and uh, you know some other artists that just kind of had this you know coming from the pandemic and, and i know we're still living in it right now but you know you're, you're one of those unique uh, never before ever happened, man, where the entire country world shut down. You know, uh, you, you got your career right there that you're grinding, uh, trying to get used, you know, some states you can, you can perform in, some states, you know, everyone needs to be vaccinated, so on and so on. Just kind of, um, how has that been um, as an artist? How are you, are you documenting this, man? Obviously, you know, we'll talk about the Lollapalooza in a moment, man, but uh, are you documenting all this kind of, how has that been for you, man? You know, it's been uh, unique, and I think it's also been very special uh, to be a part of a having career in a in a worldwide pandemic, it, it causes you to be creative in a different way. It causes you to stretch yourself, um, but it's also been challenging as well. Uh, you know, as a pro performer and artist, uh, performing is where your heart is. So for over a year and a half, uh, there's many times you weren't actually able to perform and, and touch your actual audience and feel the vibration of the fans, but you make it work how you can. And I think my uh, team and myself have done a great job of navigating the waters um, virtually. Mm -hmm. And we've done a great job where we can uh, go and reach people, uh, reach people from the standpoint of view, if their uh, city or state is open, we, we reach them. So honestly, it's been a um, fulfilling process. It's been one that uh, has allowed me to get the best of both worlds, I think. You know, the virtual world and this real world that we're uh, managing right now. 
No, nah, definitely. And, and, you know, as I think about it, man, I, I kind of think, you know, number one, some of the music that you put out, you know, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, man, just just hit so, so at a perfect time. And I'm, I'm also wondering, uh, just in uh, in your opinion, do you feel like it kind of leveled the playing field a little bit, man, being that, you know, um, all the artists had to learn how to get on that social media and really interact with the fans? Uh, just kind of from that perspective, man, did it, did it level things out a little bit? You know, I, I can't really 100% say that it leveled the playing field uh, simply because I feel like there are some artists who uh, do better um, virtually and some artists do better live. I think mm -hmm. some, some artists have actually stumbled upon a, a venue of doing things in a virtual way that um, they feel very comfortable and their fans enjoy. So I think, it, if anything, uh, it definitely gave a variety, but I can speak for myself and say that I thoroughly enjoy uh, being out in the open and performing uh, in front of people. So that's that's my perspective on it. Now for sure, man. And, and, you know, speaking of performing in front of people, you know, of course, Lollapalooza saw that on the YouTube channel. Um, and I think uh, just not too long ago on uh, IG, you were like, yo, my first music video, just shot my first music video. It feels like, you know, especially heading into 2022, there's going to be a lot of firsts. I know we'll talk about the Campbells. Uh, thing in a moment as well but just kind of talk about um what a jack ross live performance uh what what people can expect because i'll tell you more than anything uh mr ross people want to see those live performances again man people are out and about they, they want to experience that well you know man i think that um uh, what a jack ross live performance is like like is first of all it's a, it's a good time okay it's a great time and you 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 go through a a lot of different emotions. You 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 want to scream, you want to shout, you want to cry, uh, you want to have fun. You and, and you experience all those things, man. I feel like if um, and I know we're gonna get to the Campbells in a second, yep. but for lack of a better term, I feel like um, when you go to my uh, concerts and my shows, you it's like a big bowl of special soup uh, <laughs> combined with so many things in it, and it and it, but it all tastes so good. So uh, that that's what it's like. Absolutely. And, and leading right into it, man, I know you can't wait till October 29th, man. Yo, I know Friday can't come soon enough, man. Of course, the, 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 the big drop of it had to be you, your rendition of it, man. Um, definitely talk about just kind of feeling honored. And, you know, I, I know you're a rookie, you know, quote unquote, rookie in the game. But, I mean, you, you've done so many dope things already, man. Uh, having your sound on uh, different projects. But this Campbell's opportunity uh, within itself, man, kind of what does it mean to you? How was it approached to you? So on. Man, I tell you, uh, this, this Campbell's opportunity means the world to me, you know. I have so many memories related uh, to Campbell's. Just growing up as a kid, I can remember being sick, and especially with my asthma, and literally the, the only thing that my mother could get me to eat um, was that, that mac and cheese, man. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell you, like, it just, it just it brought back so many memories of even seeing my siblings uh, or, or, or my father, sometimes when he's sick, and you see that Campbell's soup uh, on, on that countertop, and she's, my mom, opening it up and getting ready to make everybody feel good. So, you know, this this opportunity means the world to me because if you know my brand, you know I'm, a, I'm about making people feel good. And I believe that Campbell's is about making people feel the same way as me. So, I, you know, it's just so many different emotions, but I'm just stoked and super excited uh, about this opportunity. Got you, got you, man. Nah, it's so exciting, man. And, uh, you know, just kind of with October 29th being the, the, the big release, man, for the It Had to Be You, your rendition of it, man. Just kind of, you know, um, in, in any form of celebration, man. What were you going to be at? Uh, are you going to do a countdown on social media? Are you going to be with friends and family? You know what? I, I, I'm always with uh, friends and family. Just just as I stated before, you know, Campbell's Soup has been such a staple for my family. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be with my friends and with my family. And um, I'm just going to shout it from the rooftop. Like, it's such a cool opportunity to know that uh, your sound is hidden behind that iconic white and red can. And, and all you got to do is just scan that QR code. And, and boom, right there, Jack Ross, like, I'm just a small town kid from Live Oak, Florida. So now to be put on this label that has helped so many people and that still continue uh, to be such a huge part every week. I know for me, every Sunday of um, our lives, it's just it's just amazing. So I don't even know how I'm going to celebrate, to be <laughs> honest with you. 
but I'm, I'm, I know for sure I'm going to be with my family and friends, and we're going to talk about it and have such a great time. Listen, man, absolutely. A few more things I want to throw at you for sure, man. Uh, you know, just kind of going back back to the uh, whole uh, R&B discussion, man, that soulful discussion. Uh, you know, your voice is so unique, man, and, you know, I, I love artists like yourself, you know, like, like the Anthony Hamiltons, man, that just... Oh, like, like you really hear it, man. So kind of, you know, I wasn't asking you the R&B Mount Rushmore, but I want to get a little bit deeper than that with you, uh, Jack, and just kind of find out who is your your soul Mount Rushmore, man. Like, it's got to be soul, man. None, none of the, no disrespect to the Chris Browns and Ushers, man, but I need that soulful Mount Rushmore uh, in your eyes. Absolutely. I mean, for me, that soulful Mount Rushmore would have to be, um, Sam Cooke, mm -hmm. Otis Redding, David Ruffin, Marvin Gaye. That 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 would be my Mount Rushmore of of the soul soulful world, and I, and I I stand by that a hundred percent. And there you have it. Yes, the one only Jack Ross pulled through for a very super dope, super fun Q and A. Please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on your notifications for all things related to Attack the Culture. And stay tuned for a little bit more from this Jack Ross Q&A. Stay tuned.